everyone. So it's time today for a journey into a galaxy far, far away. Let's have a look at the Star Wars universe. And I know some of you warned me just how much information there is and how much this universe has grown. And I was still a little bit overwhelmed despite your warnings. The original trilogy at this point came out almost 50 years ago and I probably don't need to tell you that I think the universe of Star Wars is more active now than it's ever been with so many new series and comics etc being released. It's quite impressive. This box set here is from the re-release in the late 90s, early 2000s. Not entirely sure when it came out. Let's see if it says somewhere. There, I guess it's 2004. Maybe very small here on the bottom. Lucas Films. And I think the original one is such an iconic movie. You hardly need to introduce this to anyone. And yet, Somehow, I think I'd only seen it the first time when it was re-released in the new version. I was actually first introduced to Spaceballs before I saw Star Wars. Feels a bit like a sacrilege, right? So we have Luke here with his lightsaber and his dashing 70s haircut. We have Leia in her iconic white robe and the hairstyle that was inspired by the Hopi Native Americans. We have Han Solo, Obi-Wan Kenobi and the Death Star. One thing I have to say I find quite funny is the difference here between the actual DVD cover and the cover for the entire trilogy. This looks a lot more like a B-movie here with their outfits. Very dramatic. I do like this giant Darth Vader here looming in the background and the Death Star correct me if I'm wrong does this look a little like a disco ball? it's fitting for the 70s then here there's Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back with Darth Vader and the characteristic red lightsaber indicating he's on the dark side of the force although I guess the 
menacing outfit that's kind of give it away. We have Lando Carissian and Yoda as well as Boba Fett. And a Star Destroyer here in the front. And finally, with episode 6, Return of the Jedi, the Emperor Palpatine enters the cover. We have the second Death Star, which looks unfinished here. And the Millennium Falcon. With Luke also being dressed in black. There is, of course, an unbelievable amount of information on Star Wars out there. I think my favorite character actually is missing on these covers. That's definitely Chewbacca. I guess I just see him as a oversized cat. Initially, Star Wars wasn't meant to be the trilogy that we think of today. In fact, when the first movie was released, it was just titled Star Wars and only later became Episode 4, A New Hope which is a strange way to introduce any universe, right? If you think about it. But I think George Lucas had been working on the story for quite some time and in this book here, for example, it tells us a little bit about the thought process behind it and the way he developed this entire mythology behind the universe. We can see him here looking still really young together with Mark Hamill, who played Luke Skywalker, with the lightsaber here, the iconic weapon of the Jedi. Some of the mythology that's at the heart of Star Wars has to do with the Force. And he says here, when he was 18, he had a very serious accident where he almost died. And when he came back, that really informed his own faith and his belief system. And he became really fascinated with myths and religion. He did some anthropology courses, I think, where he took a closer look at that. And maybe the central idea behind it all is that all life forms are somehow connected on a spiritual level. There's like a collective spirit or force or consciousness that includes all life forms and also goes beyond them. There's a part of us that's connected not just to other people, but also to animals, to plants, to the planets, the universe itself. 
and we might not be able to understand it, but we can still somehow feel it. And I guess that's at the heart of the force, which then became this iconic tagline, May the force be with you. So, like I said, I watched Star Wars relatively late. Um, my parents did watch a lot of science fiction, but it was more Star Trek and some of the other movies that were coming out in the late 90s. My dad also collected a German science fiction series, but for some reason this just wasn't ever on at the time. And I always felt like I was a little bit too old when I actually got to watch Star Wars and seeing this paragraph here makes so much sense. So George Lucas says it's for 12 year olds who are in the process of growing up, becoming adults and looking for their place in the world. And that's why it was made for them. It was a very conscious decision that it was specifically for this kind of audience that he wanted to make the movies. Nothing too complex, no overly intellectual ideas, but rather a very simple imagination. But rather a very simple idea of what it is that is at the heart of civilization so that the world can function. And we can see here frame one fade in a vast sea of stars and then the real titles bottom to top Converging. So you have this really strong angle here, still with an article in the title, the Star Wars. There was some soon dropped. And here we can see how this was filmed. It's actually set up in a specific way with the camera here to create this effect. But before we look at some more images in here, I want to have a look a little more at the history of Star Wars and the mythology in it. So this book here is specifically about episodes 4 to 6. But of course Star Wars isn't just the movies and from very early on you had additional publications. Oftentimes when the movie is released, you also can read it in novel form. That's definitely what happened here. But the universe was also expanded. For example, with some novels on minor characters, like here, Lando Calrissian, Rebel of the Solar System. Where again you have the Millennium Falcon on the side. And this, I don't know, I haven't read this yet because I only just recently found it in a second hand store. But I just love this little dancing figure here having a good time. Hopefully. It's probably not what's happening. <laughs> 
So, and there were three different novels or adventures, as it says here. And this is the first German translation of these novels. It's from 95, so that's quite late. They actually came out relatively early after the trilogy was released. And a little detail that has nothing to do with Star Wars, but I like it. You can see here, this is before the introduction of the Euro, so you still have the German mark, 15 mark, the Austrian shilling, 111. And of course, rights of Franken are still in use today. Apart from novels like this one, there were also comics, particularly at the start. Um, for a while, there were very successful Marvel comics, for example. But then eventually, interest kind of petered out, and it took a while until then the prequels were introduced that the interest picked back up. I remember when The Phantom Menace came out in 1999. It was a really, really big deal. Let's see if we can find some pictures of it. It's probably these two characters that were the most famous. Darth Maul, the Sith with the double-sided lightsaber, and Jar Jar Binks, which was, I think, not that well received. Three years later came Attack of the Clones. And then another three years later, in 2005, Revenge of the Sith. We have here Count Dooku, Jungle Fat, we have Anakin and Padme. The clone army. The secret marriage here. movies were being released, you still had, again, games, comics, you then had the, um, the Clone Wars, which was a, an animated series, and all of these different parts that were being released were then called the Expanded Universe. I remember I often saw that abbreviated as EU, and I had some confused moments when I read about Star Wars EU until I figured out what that meant. And of course the issue when you have such a sprawling universe is that you need to somehow keep it coherent. And so for Star Wars that meant that they created a different encyclopedia and different tiers of canon so you could look everything up and know whether it was actually canonical or maybe a secondary canon that could be contradicted. This was put together in an encyclopedia called the Holocron. G canon refers to the actual movies. 
Then there's T-Canon, which refers to TV, which was still created by Lucas. But then there was, for example, C-Canon, which means continuity, that might have introduced some radical changes, and while they were approved by George Lucas, they might not have been in line with what the actual movies were telling us. So some of these were diverging. Then there was S canon, which is for secondary, which could actually be contradictory. And then something like D and non canon, which refers to what if stories or unreleased ones, crossovers, etc. And there's one item that's actually missing in this list, which is fanon. That is, some ideas that might be accepted and popular among fans, but not actually be found anywhere in the canonical material. When you have a universe that is so popular and has so many dedicated fans, that kind of happens inevitably. But I always find that a really good sign because people get invested and they create their own stories around these characters. Something that happened though with Star Wars is that, as you know, it was bought by Disney and Disney then decided to rename all of these old stories from these from the expanded universe as the legends and the clear legends to be non-canonical. So a lot of the new stories that are being published at the moment, a lot of the TV shows, etc., actually contradict, for example, the Clone Wars. But there was a conscious decision that was being made. So, and here we have another beautiful book that's a bit more recent. It's the Jedi Path, the Manual for Students of the Force, and the Book of Sith, Secrets from the Dark Side. And let's see if we can get these out. center panel here that you can open up. I have to admit, I don't actually know what these two images are from. I am really not familiar enough with the newer releases. But I find it a really wonderful little detail. And just something that I find quite striking here is if you compare just the quality of these releases. We've had a quick look at it. Um, this is very much just a summary of the early movies with lots of lovely images. But nonetheless, it's just largely what we already know from the films. Whereas here, for one beautiful cover, but then you get a lot of background info that's not included in the movies. And this is really lovingly made. Here you have the name of different Jedi who all own this book and it says that they left their notes in the margins like 
here on the side is Yoda and Luke and Anakin. It's just really beautifully made. And the Book of Sith too has some really nice details. Like here, the edges of the pages. look a bit different. Also just the absolutely dramatic colours. It's quite beautiful. I'd just like to have a brief look at the Jedi path. We learn a little bit about the Jedi Code and this idea of the Force, the philosophy behind it that I talked about at the start. So George Lucas was probably influenced by some Eastern philosophies which were popular in um, San Francisco where he lived in the 70s. And that also influenced the description of what the Jedi try to embody and try to live. The code has five core concepts. There is no emotion, there is peace. This principle guides all meditations and interactions with all others. It reaffirms the Jedi ideal to act without recklessness and to view the action of others through the pure lens of the unifying force. There is no ignorance, there is knowledge. Those who don't understand this basic precept are quick to fear and fear is the path to the dark side. The archives represent the greatest collection of knowledge in the galaxy. There is no passion, there is serenity, a subtle extrapolation of the first precept, this reminder to act dispassionately in every deliberation extends to personal obsessions and is a reminder not to elevate the self above the mission. There is no chaos, there is harmony. Those who cannot see the threats uniting all life, your existence is random and without purpose. The Jedi perceive the structure and will of the many galaxies. And lastly, there is no death, there is the Force. All things die, but the Force lives on. As beings, we exist as shades of the forest. The end of our existence in this form is not to be overly mourned. We are part of an energy larger than ourselves. We play roles in a cosmic fabric that outstrip our incarnate understanding. Also learn about the three pillars of the Jedi, which are force, knowledge, and self-discipline. And it tells us here about the dark side. It says fear, anger, and hate are strong passions that will cause you to lose focus and to find appeal in the easy pleasures of the dark side. And love is also a strong passion and equally dangerous. 
master shall obsess over a parent, child, or lover, devote all their energies towards the special object of their focus. The Jedi must serve all, not a select few. And of course, we have a little annotation here from Anakin saying, I miss people outside this temple and would do anything to protect them. Does that make me a bad person? Here it tells us about the resources of the Jedi Temple and the Holocron Vaults. We also get a map of the different planets in the universe. We have Coruscant here, right near the center. Shows us the different trade routes here in black. Going towards the rim. And we have different rim borders. So different areas within the galaxy. Some a little more dangerous than others. There's some information on the lightsabers here, for example, and the different elements, the crystals that are needed to make one. It tells us about, for example, the agricultural core, as well as the medical and educational core for young Jedi who never become Padawans or later Jedi Masters. So of course there are also some who then choose to work, for example, for the Met Corps. So I think a really, really lovely book. And I'm sure back in the 70s, when he was filming here in Tunisia, George Lucas never imagined that his universe would grow so much. I'm always fascinated just by how they film some of the characters like C-3PO. That was inspired by the robots in Metropolis by Fritz Lang. Or R2-D2, we actually had someone inside the robot. And I remember back when I first saw the original trilogy, I thought I had this really 70s flair to it. But I don't know, maybe because it's just been around for so long and it is such an iconic piece of media. I don't quite see that anymore. I mean, of course, it's there in some of the haircuts, some of the designs. But it really kind of stands for itself as this really iconic universe. Absolutely love this. 
Parishina, they are here with this beautiful robe. so compelling is just that the droids too really have their own personality and feel lifelike I guess as they're moving through the world and I just want to finish here with one last picture I already said I think Chewbacca is one of my favorite characters in the entire franchise and I found a picture, I think if I had been around in the 70s that would have been my dream job look at that just making sure the fur on the costume looks great brushing his hair I would have loved to do that for today maybe you're ready to sleep I think I'm ready to actually watch some of the newer series that I haven't had time to see yet either way thank you so much for spending some time with now I'll see you again soon. Good night.